Welcome everyone to GamerMelt. Today, Intel shows off their first ARC GPU. AMD's RX 7000 GPUs are built on what? They lied about the exploding PSUs. Microsoft is trying to force you to use Edge. And Ryzen 6000 CPUs are absolute monsters. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, Intel officially showed off their first upcoming ARC GPU. Well, sort of. In a video tweeted out by Intel Graphics, the company made images in the sky with a thousand Intel drones, and it all seems to lead up to this, an image of a dual fan Intel GPU. Now, it obviously isn't all that detailed, but it looks pretty close to the design of the engineering sample from Moore's Law is Dead. You can see that the fans have the same amount of blades and the dimples were recreated as well, meaning this could actually be a final design instead of just the engineering sample. Either way, it's clear Intel is ramping up PR ahead of their Q1 launch. Let's just hope the wait has been worth it. But first, learning computer science has never been easier with today's sponsor, Brilliant, the website and app that teaches you by doing. And that means you're actually solving problems instead of just watching someone else do it. So this isn't about memorizing facts for some test. Just pick a course you're interested in and get started. To top it all off, Brilliant has been upgrading their courses over the last year so they're even more interactive. And they're still working on more. Like scientific thinking was just added this month. And speaking of courses, Brilliant has something for every skill level, from computer science fundamentals to search engines. So stop wasting time learning the wrong way. Do it right the first time by visiting brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And the first 200 people who visit the link get 20% off the annual premium today. Next up for today, we have an interesting story on AMD's upcoming RX 7000 GPUs. The story originally comes from a tweet by 3dcenter.org that goes over a couple tweets by known leaker Graymon55. In it, he claims that Navi 31 through 33 are the only GPUs based on RDNA 3. Remember that RDNA 3 is AMD's next-gen GPU architecture. This led 3dcenter.org to speculate a couple possibilities for GPUs below Navi 33. Don't forget that Navi 31 would make up the higher-end GPUs while Navi 32 is more mid-range and Navi 33 going lower. Either way, Graymon55 responded to 3dcenter.org speculation to say 6 nanometer refresh, meaning AMD is apparently planning to refresh RDNA 2, so RX 7000 GPUs will be built on both 5 nanometer RDNA 3 and 6 nanometer RDNA 2. Next up, I have a couple follow-ups to a recent story I did on exploding PSUs. In that video, I went over the response from Gigabyte, where they basically acknowledged the issue but then seemed to blame reviewers for finding it in the first place. Well, first up, the original Tech Power Up reviewer responded to Gigabyte's response and it's pretty interesting. For one, they claimed that it required a heavy load over a long period of time, but apparently it happened after a very short time for both gamers Nexus and him. Not only that, but they are apparently failing under normal use, which goes against Gigabyte's claims as well. And there's really a lot here, so I'll include a link to his response, but it's nothing compared to the newest story. According to a post on Reddit, Gigabyte is refusing to honor the RMA that they promised in their statement. In the response to the user's RMA request, Gigabyte stated that it's only applicable to newer batches. The issue is that their PR statement didn't say anything about newer batches, just if your model is within the range of serial numbers, and this Redditor's PSU is. Basically, Gigabyte seems to have flat lied in their statement in multiple ways, from the conditions that caused the problem to promising an RMA, not to mention the fact that they blame reviewers for finding the issue in the first place. Let's just say I probably won't be recommending Gigabyte for builds anytime soon. Next up for today, Microsoft looks to be trying to force users to use their Edge browser in Windows 11, or at least make it harder for them to switch. Of course, most everyone here likely knows how to change the browser in Windows 10, since installing Chrome or Firefox is typically one of the first things you do with a new build. You just go in and change the default browser to whatever you want. Well, according to The Verge in Windows 11, things are very different. This time, if you don't click Always Use This App the first time you visit a link with a new browser, you have to go in and change the default browser 
based on file type, meaning you have to change it for HTML, SVG, PDF, etc., all of which are defaulted to Edge. To me, what's so frustrating isn't necessarily that you have to click it multiple times as opposed to once, but that the average user will likely go there, not have a clue what those file types mean, so they don't change any. As The Verge points out, most browsers simply take you to the default browser setting when asking you to switch over. Unfortunately, all current browsers except for Firefox still do. So when you're in the desired browser and they ask you to switch, most will send you to this. Microsoft claims they did this to allow users more control over default apps, but it definitely seems more like they're trying to place a further roadblock in the way of using something other than their browser. And lastly for today, we have a huge story on AMD's upcoming Zen 4 based CPUs, likely their Ryzen 6000 parts depending on what AMD calls their Zen 3D CPUs. Either way, the story originally comes from the leaker Ulysses, who shared the schematics of AMD's upcoming AM5 socket, and according to this, it may actually be compatible with AM4 coolers. And leaker executable fix confirmed this, though it's apparently up to AMD. Now, what's even more interesting about this tweet from Ulysses is that it shows the TDP requirements for AMD's upcoming AM5 parts. And as you can see, it goes all the way up to 170 watts, which helps confirm a tweet we saw a little while back claiming the same thing. For context, AMD's current 16-core 5950X only has a TDP of 105 watts. Plus, it requires a water cooler with at least a 280 millimeter radiator. And this is such a big deal because remember that AMD's Zen 4 based CPUs are set to be built on TSMC's 5 nanometer process. So even though it's built on that, AMD is requiring a massive amount of wattage, which tells me that their next gen chips are likely going to be a huge upgrade over what we have now. Let's just say I'm excited. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next-gen CPUs or what do you think about the whole gigabyte fiasco? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!